Hello Internet. Welcome to a very special video, courtesy of the one and only Adventure Link. That's me. So this is my channel, so what, would you, what more would you expecting? I'm Tiny Tim. Hm. Well, I guess the Ninja Turtles thing got kind of wore out, but it'll come back at some point. With that being said, today I have my Samsung Galaxy S4 here. It's in this bag. Um, I remember from the uh, Wheel Hub video that this was going to be my last video with the Evo 3D, but I guess this is truly going to be the last one. This is going to be kind of like a hybrid between my Evo 3D and my laptop. So let's get started. Um, normally, I guess it would come in a box. This would be an unboxing video, but it's in a bag, so we're going to call this the unbagging of the Galaxy S4, setting it up. Then, un well, first unbagging it, then unboxing it, then set it up, then do some initial impressions, and then I guess have a short V-Vlog at the end. Came in the UPS, as you can see, this nice little disclaimer regarding lithium-ion batteries, because the Galaxy S4 has a lithium-ion battery in it, so let's go on ahead and get started with the unbagging process. One thing I can say about other people is that they don't like to use separate zip poly bags like Amazon uses. Instead, I gotta rip this all open, rip it to shreds. There we go. Alrighty, we go inside. Ooh, it's in a box. There she is. The Samsung Galaxy S4 on T-Mobile. Yep, there it is, T-Mobile. 16 gigs because most likely it's going to be the only one that's going to be out now. And I'm not sure if they're going to have a 32 gig, but the 64 gig most likely is not coming regardless of network. Um, looks like it says 4G LTE capable, infrared blaster, watch on, Android operating system, which in this regard is 4.2.2. So I guess you could say this is a second look at Android 4.2.2 because if you remember from my Nexus 7 video, I didn't really like 4.2 the 4.2 branch of Android that much. Tangents aside, 5 inch full HD Super AMOLED display, 1.9 gigahertz quad core processor, and just so you know, on some networks, I don't think there was any around here, but there's quite a few of them that had a 8 core processor. Unfortunately, I don't think this was the LTE, this wasn't the LTE ones, this was like 3G only. So, I guess you get what you pay for. 13 megapixel rear face camera, full HD playback and recording. And if you're getting the AT&T version and or most likely the Verizon, just as a fair warning, there should be another section on there that says unlocked, or not unlocked, but locked slash verifiable bootloader. Because in this regard, I had a friend of mine on Facebook named Randy Yeagers. Hope I pronounced your name correctly, but if I didn't, I do apologize. That being said, he posted a link to, on my Facebook regarding the Galaxy S4s on AT&T where there's a feature in it that supposedly verifies the bootloader, or not verifies the bootloader, but verifies recovery image and the boot image to make sure that it runs on AT&T and AT&T's network. So I guess for a while, custom firmwares will be out of the question on AT&T. Most likely Verizon will get the same treatment. So... Thought I'd give you the heads up on that. There is a, there will be a link in the video description regarding this news. You could thank one of the head guys of CyanogenMod, Steve Kallick or something like that. Can't remember his name offhand. 
he used to work for, he got hired in at Samsung. Found that out about the Galaxy S4s on AT&T. So, I guess we have him to thank. So, we're going to move over from my body to the table. Oh, nice. Outside wrappers. Sweet. Okay, so there's disclaimers on here. Important. By purchasing or opening this package or using T-Mobile service, you agree to be bound by the enclosed T-Mobile terms and conditions, which include arbitration and early termination v. provisions. It's the same thing on the other side, too. I'm going to use my fingernails real fast and get this disclaimer out of the way here. Okay, looks like we got... Ooh! There she is. The Samsung Galaxy S4 that we've been waiting so long for since September of 2012. And here... I can separate this. Okay, looks like we got the instructions. A merchandise return label. T-Mobile terms and conditions. Yet another pair of headphones. Spare um, headphone covers. If that goes in your ear. Neat little USB cord. Apparently it uses the many, the, not the many, but the micro standard of USB. Looks like it's a pretty fairly decent length. I guess somebody listened to my Nexus 7 review and requested longer cords. And there's the charging, the charger. Well, this ain't the Avenger or the Ram or the Dart. It's the, it's the charger. Hopefully one with the, and the engine in it. <laughs> Moving on. We have the battery. And for packaging. And I guess that's it. So let me take a moment to get the SIM card and put the battery in. We'll get everything set up. Figured I'd give you a quick, real quick tour of the underhood of the Galaxy S4. Where my thumb is, is where the the EMIC information and all that that's specific to this phone. I'm not sure what that does. There's your camera. That there's your micro SD. And then right next door is the SIM card slot. Really quickly, I would add make an honorable excuse me, make an honorable mention of this part here. Back of the phone says T Mobile, Galaxy S4 at the bottom. Of course where it says T Mobile would say Sprint if it was Sprint, ATT if it was ATT. And Verizon if it was Verizon. And of course, if it does have AT&T or Verizon on it, there should be a disclaimer at the bottom of that logo that says, comes with a locked slash verifiable bootloader. Okay, so now that I got my phone all reassembled and all that, here we go on its first boot. It says Samsung Galaxy S4. With the Samsung logo. Da -da 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 -da. Ooh, Samsung Galaxy, welcome. Select language, English. If you're visually impaired or hard of hearing, tap accessory below to change the accessibility settings. Eh, screw that. Auto update time and date, hit next. To see available networks, turn on Wi Fi. 
Did you know you can make your phone can make calls over Wi-Fi? Yes, I can. Thank you, Justin Hubbard, for pointing that out to me. I do appreciate that. But we're going to skip this for now. I'm going to connect to a Wi-Fi network. I'm going to hit next. Samsung account. Create a Samsung account. You can back up personal data securely. And whoever write a service with a single account, we're going to skip this. Do you have a Google account? If you use Gmail, answer yes. So I'm going to sign into my Gmail real quick and get that set up, and I will be right back. All right, and we're back. Signing in. This can take a few minutes. Entertainment, Google Play, bring you the entertainment you love in the palm of your hand. We're going to skip this one for now as well. Back up and restore. We are going to say yes to both of these. Resort from my Google account to this phone. Keep this phone backed up with my Google account. So we're going to go next. Your phone is connecting to Google to restore your account. This can take a while. So we're going to take, I'm going to take his word for it. And we're going to come back in a few moments when, well or not. Google location. I'm going to keep these on for now. Just a sec. Dropbox. Ooh! I get a 50 gig Dropbox for two years. Sounds nifty, but we're going to skip this for now. Tap each function to let's see more details about it. S-Beam. Allow data with exchange with device touches another device. AirView. AirView shows you helpful information when you hover your finger over the screen for a while. Air Gesture. Control your phone by making a specific gesture with your hand above the sensor. Voice control. Use voice commands to control the device. Smart stay. Screen stays on as long as you are looking at it. Smart pause. Video will pause when the device detects that you are facing away from the screen. Smart scroll. When your eyes have been detected, the screen will scroll according to the angle at which you tilt your head or the device. Easy mode. Easy mode helps you to use your device more easily with a simpler home screen layout. Last but not least, adapt display. This mode automatically optimizes the display to the best quality. We're going to leave all these at default for the time being. I may play with them a little later. I may not, but we're going to leave them all default for now. Thank you. Device name. That's me! Your device name will be shown when you use Bluetooth, Wi-Fi Direct, Tethering, etc. We're going to hit Finish. I'm going to leave that there for the time being, but I will change that at some point. Hit Finish. Collect Diagnostics. As part of our commitment to delivering the best network quality and device experience possible, this device is equipped with diagnostic software. Gee, doesn't that sound familiar with Sprint? That Simon.APK or whatever it is now. Anyways, consistent with T-Mobile's privacy policy, this software collects diagnostic data so that T-Mobile can better troubleshoot technical issues with your device or service. Diagnostic data transmissions are free of charge and do not count towards your T-Mobile data usage. <laughs> As if I got unlimited 4G on this bad boy. That don't matter. This software does not capture the content of your calls or messages. To disable data collection, please go to Settings, Accounts, Backup and Reset, then Collect Diagnostics. Hit Close. Locating, please wait. Two o'clock, Dayton, sunny, 72 degrees Fahrenheit, and we're in. All right, I'm in my phone. I put in a phone number, which is the 12 and Touch hotline, if you're familiar with 12 and Touch in the Cincinnati area. So we're going to hit call and see what it does. Turn the speakerphone on. Indeed, before you hit the door. Oh, my bad. Morning, Cincinnati. For the local 12 poll, press 1. Thanks so much for watching the Sports Authority here on Local 12 Sports. I'm Zach Wells. A day after the NFL draft, it's time for you to grade it out. Break out your red pens. Of these five, the first five picks the Bengals made, which one do you think will have the most immediate impact? If you think Tyler Eifert, press one. Giovanni Bernard, press two. Marcus Hunt, press three. Sean Williams, press four. Or Sean Porter, press five. 
And just just for what it's worth, I'm not really fond of the Bengals or the Reds for that matter, so this really doesn't matter. So, one. Hey, I voted in the local 12 poll for today. Woohoo! And that's what it looks like when you're done with the call. I guess. Take me back to my home screen. Come on. Thank you. Okay. Well, now that we're back at the home screen, I have a, I have it all set up, I guess. So now it's time to get all my apps on here, get this thing reconfigured the way I want it to. And I will be back momentarily to do some more initial impressions. Okay, so I know this isn't what you're used to, you know, root the droid and then start backing up all your apps and then transfer them over. So I had to do it the old fashioned way. But we're downloading Final Fantasy 3, which is the Final Fantasy 3 that came on regular Nintendo, aka the Famicom in Japan. We never got it here until 2006 on the Nintendo DS remake, and then was ported to all the other Android phones. Guess you can see, we are using the 4G connection, and it's going pretty quickly. Okay, I just figured out how to enable USB debugging. Um, you hit this button right here, go to settings, go to more, go to about device, and where it says build number, you want to keep tapping this over and over and over until it says congratulations, you are now a developer. You know, like that. It says no need developer mode has already been turned on because I already just turned it on, but Figured I would at least let you know of this. Alrighty. Looks like we got super user on this thing. That means my droid is now rooted. Yay. Just so you know, it's an exploit called Moto Chopper. It works on uh, not only Motorola devices, but also things that run uh, Qualcomm chips, which this phone does. You probably can't see the little logo on there. But just as a heads up, there was a little sticker that says Qualcomm 4G. Somewhere right around up here. And if you have it, this should most likely work for you. I will have a link to Moto Chopper and the big thread on it in the video description. And you can read over that and play with the root as you please. Whee! That happy little jelly bean means that we are on Android 4.2.2. How do we get there, you ask? Well, we go under About Device, where it says Android version 4.2.2. Do the same thing like for enabling the developer options. Just keep clicking it over and over and over. Android 4.2 and a happy little jelly bean. Okay, before I start playing with every single little feature and to get on with the initial impressions review and the vlog portion, to close out on the initial impressions of the S4, I do want to say that so far it's an awesome device. The only one of the few drawbacks that I can think of right now is that the software is based off of Android 4.2.2, which, just like before with the Nexus 7, it does not work with 6 axis or Wii remotes, which is complete and utter bull. And it bites bad. Hopefully, they will get on the ball with this and get this fixed. Uh, Mike, what can I say about the screen? Well, the screen, you know, is pretty large. And But then just as a fair warning, if you're playing like Angry Birds and such, the little buttons like to make all the menus and stuff come up are actually smaller than what they are on my Evo 3D. So do keep that in mind if you have fat fingers like I do. Hmm, what else can I say? 4G was pretty quick. I guess that's all I have to say on initial impressions of the S4 and uh, guiding through it. Overall, I hope it does kick, kick butt and blow everything out of the water. And hopefully somebody will unlock the bootloader and get around the verification. That way we can put custom firmwares, especially CyanogenMod, on our, new, on our S4s. And to get on with the vlog portion of this video, um, let's see. In recent repairs, 
I'm starting to rebuild the AC the AC system in my Saturn. I've got the receiver dryer down. Hopefully tonight we'll get the thermal expansion valve in where the compressor out of the way. I replaced the wheel hub on my Grand Marquis. There's a video on that. Also got another couple videos up regarding the hood adjustment and the power window switch replacement. Unfortunately, it did not fix my problem, but I at least have an why the switches for the driver's side switch wouldn't light up. It was some bad in the module. Replaced it and everything's good to go again on the lighting department. Um, I replaced the headlight housing on my Saturn. Mm, I guess other than getting the S4 of my little internet box, which I'll do another review on that pretty soon. Or I, I mean, I will do a review on it pretty soon. And of course, I will come back in about a week or so with the Galaxy S4 and do another review on it. Anyways, I'm Adventure Link. Um, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, praise, criticisms, etc., about my initial impressions review, the unbagging in this regard, and unboxing, and the vlog, hit me up in the comments section. The subscribe, thumbs up, thumbs down buttons are at the bottom of each and every video on YouTube. Mine are no exception. You should know what they do by now. And if you have any questions regarding mobile devices as a whole, regardless of make, model, or OS, such as Androids, Windows Phones, iOS, RIM, slash Blackberry, hit up the XDA Developers Forums. But just as a fair warning, the forum is big and the community is big, so most likely your questions have already been answered at least once, if not several times. Do search before posting. And I'm going to close this vlog out by putting Eric the Car Guy and saying, Be safe, have fun, and stay dirty. And it's starting to get pretty warm outside again, so make sure you stay cool and stay hydrated. Don't forget to scan your spoo. Sometimes your pee slip. See you next time, and have a good day.